Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue, secret spread barbecue love. You guys are in for a treat. Al, my buddy, all the way from North Carolina, still in my backyard. We are going to attempt to do ribs two ways. Yes. And during the course of this rib cook, we're going to share the myths and the truths of cooking backyard style ribs and cooking competition style ribs. So when you watch this episode, you're going to see all the tricks of the trade. Al's going to be showcasing the backyard portion and I'm going to be doing the competition portion. You definitely have a lot to learn, so stay tuned to the end. Uh, Spirit comes from a uh, hog, right? And uh, usually you have a left and a right. So I'm holding with me a right spirit. It's on the chest of the cow. So right. you are holding a... Can you flip it the other way? No. So incidentally, uh, he's also holding a left one. So we have two lefties. Right. So it's a, it's a good uh, practice trim for yep. two lefties. Well, sometimes I cook them whole, but um, most of the time I'd rather use this for uh, for a high fat content pork for sausage, uh, or I'll make rib tips or something like that. So I'd, I'd, I'd rather cook, pull it separately and cook it than keep it all on together. First thing we want to do is we want to remove the sternum, which is the big bone. Right. On this particular rib, they already removed it, right. so I don't. I only need to do five instead of six steps. So right. you cut this piece off, it comes off. The second thing I do is I do the same thing as you. I trim off the diaphragm, which is the right. flap. On a cow, this is known as the fajita meat. So when right. you go and eat fajitas, this is what you do. This is a great for making tacos. Yeah, and you can really chop it up, make great tacos. So that's step number two. Step number three is I like to remove the rib tip, which is the top part. Right. And the way I do that, I use Harry's fourth bone technique. Okay. Uh, spare rib has about 13 bones, sometimes 14. The longest bone on a spare rib is actually bone number four. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four. I'm going to run my knife right here. That right. is the longest bone. Okay. I'm going to make a parallel cut going this way, right. parallel to this side like so. Right. And I'm going to cut it right across the middle. And that will sever the rib tip perfectly right. without worrying about getting into the bone. Right. And I only have a little bit of knuckle bone left. So let's do the knuckle bone. So that's perfect. Nice. Yeah. And like you, this is thick and this is thin. Right. I'll trim it off around the 10th bone mark like so. And then for me, this part has a lot of fat. Right. I don't care for it for competition. So in my competition rib, I have nine bones. Oh, so you're just taking that whole bone off. I take the whole bone off. So I have a nine bone rack, this is for competition. And the way you pick a rib is you pick it based on size, right? symmetry, striation, mm -hmm. and marbling. Okay. So this one is pretty good. Yours is better. So in competition, yours, this part will be better than mine. Mine is not so bad. You want to trade? No, no this is okay. quite, quite all right. So let's get some seasoning on here. And once again, you've got a whole array there and I'm keeping it simple for the backyard. I don't find that I need to do a lot. Now I'm using a binder, I'm using mustard. Now, you know, we did the binder experiment that aired a couple of weeks ago and- What did you find uh, out? And mustard was the favorite. Wow. Mustard was the favorite. So mm -hmm. I know like you were all team Worcestershire mm -hmm. Shire sauce, right? Um, mm -hmm. But the mustard was the one that really came through. So I'm going to use mustard. So you're going to apply the rub until it becomes opaque underneath. Right. And like that's perfect. Right. And then you stop. And then you you notice how he's applying the rub about a foot away. That's the proper height so that he shakes evenly. And then he's going to gently just pat it down. Yep. So he, and you don't rub it rub. You always pat it rub down. That's so right. It stays even. And you notice he started with the bone side. And then he's going to flip it over and do the meat side now. Right. And that's because this is my presentation side. So it's okay if we get... A little bit of smudging down on the bone side but up here we want it to be beautiful whether we're competition or backyard i have a pork injection here and you can watch my video i have a, quite a few videos out right. there on my channel where i do quick shootouts between pork injections so in this particular one i, I use two of my favorite injections so go watch the video to see which one i use right. i'm gonna we'll put a link down in the description so that you guys can see that video right. so uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna inject the meat to give it more flavor, I'm just gonna plunge my needle between the bone like so, and inject it and fill up the pocket with a little bit of liquid. Move it up, inject some more, move it up, and plump up the rib between the bone. Nice. Now, obviously, you do not do this with your poker buddies. You only do this when you want to try to win ten thousand dollar check in the contest. But I'm plumping up the rib between the bone, filling it up with the liquid as best as I can, right. and making sure that I 
get all of my nine bones nicely injected so that it has additional flavor and that will cause a plumping and moisturizing action. So the first layer that goes on is some pepper. I'm, I'm going to use the pepper from my uh, Texas style, Lone Star, which is a Texas style brisket Dalmatian rub. So okay. pepper rub. There's a little bit of black pepper on the top like so. And I want to add a little bit of my uh, pecan rub on the back. Pecan rub. And we're going to use the fruit rubs on the front. So I'm using nut rubs on the bone side and I'm using fruit rubs on the meat side. Oh, that's Except So this, yes. uh, this is a pecan. Nice, nice uh, kind of nutty flavor on the back side. Just a little bit, just a touch of pecan. And uh, I'm gonna basically add a little bit of my umami. This is kind of like umami. my uh, uh, kind of umami rub. It's a white color and it gives us tremendous punch in terms of flavor with no MSG at all. So just a ni nice finishing touch like that. And we're done. The back was uh, a nut rub. So the front, I'm using my uh, cherry and my peach rub. So this okay. is fantastic flavor. Cherry and peach on the meat side. On the meat side. Okay. So, and you notice that it's got beautiful flecks of chili in there. Yeah. So it gives a little bit of heat. I'm gonna now add my honeylicious peach on it. So, nice even coat. Apply it about ten feet away, and I always shake my bottle before I apply it on. I gently tap it down, and I just finish it with my umami rub, which is kind of like a supercharged the MSG, same, non same MSG with non MSG. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So just a little bit of touch on top as a finishing rub. And I let this sit for about an hour and a half. Okay, so a little longer than me. Two hours okay. is best, but you know, you can cook it right away. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Okay. The ribs are getting ready for the shoot. And uh, we have a few of these St. Louis ribs here. This is uh, Al's backyard style and Harry's competition style. And spritzing helps to set the mark. Once the mark's set, we're going to go ahead and wrap it, show you guys how a backyard is done. And Al, you're going to wrap it in paper or are you going to wrap it in paper? I'm going to wrap in paper. Paper? Okay. Yeah, so you see one that Al trimmed properly and one that Al got a little too aggressive <laughs> on, and you see Harry's two perfectly trimmed racks. <laughs> so good. It's all going to be eaten anyway, so. See what they look like before we sauce them and compare notes. All right, open mine. I'll open mine. Of course, yours is easier to open because you got your fancy burrito wrap. You got a lot of juice. Okay. All right. So, so let's, let's talk it. about the appearance, color. All right. So, I did not get a lot of pullback on mine. You. Yeah, I, I, you I had a little trick here, so I. Yeah, you got a perfect pullback. I mine. I'm not as. Right now, you've got a lot more. So color. My, my, my color is a little bit mahogany-ish, right? Like I told you, when I go to bed at night, I fantasize about the 27 shades of red. Right. And that's kind of the, how the color looks like. It's been using a peach and cherry rub, and it's a little, kind of a little bit more reddish. And both are good. Well, we're going to sauce it now, and you're using some of my sauces. Yeah. And I blended my sauces like Lego blocks. So I have a sweet, a hot, a tangy, and original, and an right. all-American. Right. Uh, and I think you're going to try my using... original and my hot, right? Yeah. So I know I like your original. And uh, on resin, usually I do your original and one of your sweet rubs, okay. but, or sweet sauces. But I uh, I got to taste that hot earlier, and I think I'm gonna do like an 80-20 roughly. I'm gonna use the original as my first layer, and then I'm gonna put just a little bit of the hot on top. In a competition setting, I would basically put the sauce on, right? And my ribs are super hot. Right. Because it just came out the pit and I'll let the residual heat set the sauce. Okay. Alternatively, you can paint the sauce on and put it in the pit for about five that? minutes just right. to set the sauce. Which is what I usually do. So I'm going to use my 50-50 Carolina Tangy and Cheeky Sweet Kansas City. So I, I like a kind of a sweet and tangy sauce. Well, sorry, a little bit more sweet than tangy, so I'm going to add it here. I'm going to mix it on the tabletop here. So I, I, I mix three sauces, so just a so little you're bit. Gonna, you're going to mix together and on the board. In the homage and... to you, I'm going to mix them up on the tabletop. Okay. I'm going to brush my sauce on. So I'm just going to drizzle the hot over here while you're doing that. So a competition technique is you spray water, and that gets rid of the brush marks. So I'll, I'll show you okay. what I mean here. That go. way the brush marks don't appear. So for those of you at home who want to impress your father-in-law, mother-in-law, this is the technique we use in competition. 
All right, so let's cut into these. I'm going to cut from the middle. How do you cut? I cut right from the middle too. Okay. So. You of course have pullback, so you can see your bones. Yes. I of course don't. So I'm going to cut like this because I'm a cheating cheater. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay. I'm pretty happy with my first one. I'm going to taste one on the side, make some final seasoning. All right. Wait, you're going to taste and make more seasoning changes? Mm -hmm. This is the most important part of the contract. Competition All right, competition ribs for both yeah. of you. Now, Harry, you Do we have... need to taste also or no? Yeah, I think we should taste. Oh, we should taste. All right, I'm going to take this one. You have not been talking this up. Okay. You, 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 is, is this one of the things that's inedible or? Uh, this one is probably edible because okay. uh, I tend to calibrate more salt towards the end. So the brisket is the saltiest, this is second saltiest. All right. chicken is less salty. So Kevin, you don't know this. I know Harry, you know this because you watch my videos, but on this channel, we toast, so we cheers each other, and we cheers the audience. Yeah. And can they, can they have one? Can I give them this one? Yeah. All right, this one's for you guys. Yeah, right. All right, we're ready? One, one, one for, my, for my guy here. Yeah, there you go. All right, you guys get one too. All right, ready? Ready, go. Cheers. 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 <laughs> I think it's too sweet for me, but it's good. Like, I can see how hard you worked, and you certainly got the flavor profile and the layers of flavor right. Yeah, this is uh, kind of what the flavor profile is in California. Okay. And, uh, eat. And sweet. If I go to Kansas okay. City, this will be just daily, sickly sweet. No heat. Okay. Cheers. 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 All right. Cheers. Good. We put it. I'm not going to voice an opinion because I made it. Okay. Nice okay. and juicy. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. So not as complex a flavor as Harry's. Nope. Nope. It, it's when it's done with the first flavor, it, it doesn't go any further. But right. Yeah. It, it's when it's done talking, it's done speak. Okay. It is good though. It's saying good words. All right. Are you saying that because I pay you? <laughs> <laughs> Steven. <laughs> no, it's great. Nice bite marks. Very tender. Yeah. Delicious. All right. But very different, right? Yeah. Completely yeah. different. So, yeah. so folks at home, uh, don't take this too hard because the competition mm -hmm. rib is designed for one by one. This is meant for eating with your family and friends. So I would eat this in a heartbeat. Really good. I enjoy this. Awesome. I had a tremendous day and a lot of fun with Al and his crew and together with my crew. This is the best part of shooting videos is you get to taste your product at the end. All right, means I have uh, Al's, Al's ribs here and then my rib. So let's go ahead and let you try. Sniffing it, and he went for Harry's rib first and then he went for Al's rib. So there you go. Beans likes the competition rib better than the backyard. No offense, it's all good. But Mr. Beans is a very skilled barbecue judge, so you have to trust his opinion. Thanks for stopping by, guys, watching my video. I hope you guys enjoy this uh, little throwdown with Al Wazenberger from uh, Eat More Vegans. Until the next video, we will see ya. Huge shout out and thanks to my Patreons for helping me keep the lights on the channel on.